Poland, uh, they open uh, restaurants, you know, more or less uh, like the gardens, you know, for the bars that you can go grab a beer or stay a little bit, but you need to keep a distance, social distance, you know, one and a half meter, something like this. You know, I've been in first day in the evening and it was like super packed with people, you know, the people missed so much that part of life, you know, that they just go crazy about it, you know, it's that people are everywhere and it's like total... It was a total party. I love it. You know, honestly, I, I, I was. But honestly, I also I, I feel that kind of impression of um, anxiety. I think it's called like this. That you know, it's like people there. You know, they are talking. What is happening? I I did in the bar. You know, a long time, only like one and a half year. And yeah. suddenly, I'm jumping into the situation. A lot of strange people around me. You know, I grab a beer. You know, this is in the glass. That it's not mine. You know, I didn't use to that. It's, it was crazy a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you you try you try to go somewhere out, or are you still staying uh, home? Uh, you stay you are home of you stay in front of this. We had a couple of beers already on the terrace where, of course, you need to sit on one and a half meters uh, from a, uh, from apart from each other, which is yeah. uh, still a bit different, but um, it's getting a little bit there. I'm very happy when tomorrow the gyms are opening and I can actually start physically do something. To say a year ago now, I gained a lot. <laughs> it's yeah, to lose it again. It's like for everybody get this, you know, it's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, Indeed, but yes. Probably, yeah, but... You know, come on, it's it's gonna happen very quickly. You know, people will jump in into the life, and it will gonna go very, uh, very smoothly. Mm, you know, because not maybe everybody knows. Um, today with us is uh, Vadim. Vadim is uh, from a company called Claudian, and uh, I don't know if you if uh, our uh, our listeners knows a little bit about this company. Vadim, tell us a little bit about Claudian itself. What is it and uh, if you can, uh, if you can express, uh, you know, the vision of the company a little bit, just to briefly describe what is Cloudy and all about. Yes, of course. Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Vadim Shipka. I'm the inside sales at Claudian. Uh, Claudian is an American Japanese based uh, company with the headquarters in San Mateo, California. Uh, we are focusing since 2011 on uh, object storage. This is our main product. Therefore, we have a technology called HyperStore. Exactly, yeah. So uh, since 2011, we are actually working very, very close with uh, a lot of managed service providers worldwide. Our first one is uh, NTT in Japan, and still our customer very, very happy about it. We have around 250 employees and 600 customers worldwide. Yeah, yeah so it's a lot of, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, of <laughs> a lot going uh, on. <laughs> indeed, oh, indeed, I, so. I like it very much, you know. Uh, basically, you know, you tell about the object storage itself, you know. Uh, I, you know, we, we, we talk a lot here about storage solution, you know, like hyperconvergence, block storage, fiber channel, iSCSI, all of that stuff that's like a crazy data center focused stuff. And could you tell us a little bit why to bother about object storage at all? But what is this? Yes. You know, why, why we need that? You know, it's like yeah. just, just storage. Come on, it's another okay. type of storage. Oh my God, what what is this? <laughs> yeah. So so object storage. What is object storage? Object storage is a perfect technology for uh, storage in the cloud, uh, for data in the cloud, or for unstructured data. Why is that? Um, because um, we are growing exponentially with our data. When you think about social media, Internet of Things, and so on, also backup data, and so on, uh, we are growing. And therefore, you need something that is exabyte scalable, but needs also to be easy to scale. So what we see at the moment, the, actually the, the opportunities that we have at the moment is the public storage space, so public cloud, that is, it seems like it's exponentially um, scalable. Uh, mm-hmm. We are delivering actually the same. So uh, you can do that the same with us uh, by only starting with free nodes, for example. You can mm-hmm. have an entry point in that. And uh, to go back a little okay. bit, what is what is object storage in general? So just yeah, so ob- yeah, so object storage in general, it's going to be something that you can um, just to you know to explain to our uh, our listeners, something that you can grow, but you can start small. Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of small, you know, because yeah. object storage is not for small, you know, it's not like two terabytes of data, you know, it's not like a small mass. It's more or less hundreds of terabytes of data in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so Claudian mm-hmm. itself starts actually as a software only solution with 10 terabytes. This is our beginning point, starting point. Uh, the appliance is starting at 120 terabytes upwards. Um, we are seeing each, see 
ourselves more in the huge enterprise scale, in the MSPs scale. So a bit more of a American volume. American MSP second. scale. I, I like it. You know, that is the kind of style that it's, you know, um, you know, we are, we are living in Central Europe, Europe, you know, the scale of MSP in Central Europe, 10 terabytes, it seems to be a little, you know, like a, big, like a big step. But uh, what I realized, you know, that the, the object storage from what the designs that we made in recent years, the object storage enters into the area of, um, first of all, scalable, scalable soft storage, but also for kind of artifact storage so basically the people put their you know pictures put some metadata on them they treat more storage like a database mm -hmm. it's not it's not only you know like a block storage you supposed to put a file and that's all no so you need to imagine it like that what we're doing in the object itself there is a unique identifier there's the metadata and your your data that you want to store and then it goes out in the space so what we are having is for example a single namespace that means that you can actually um, get your data, retrieve your data back from different data centers under one namespace. Okay, so basically uh, it works a little bit similar to S3 buckets that we used from AWS, you know, so in the AWS you have this S3 bucket and you just drop the data through some kind of link, you know, and uh, what you, what I understand from what you're saying that clouding works pretty much the same. So uh, a presenting, exposing to the user and point and uh, users uploading, downloading data from the same point. Um, okay. So, this, is, this is exactly that. Yeah, so I just, actually, I just, <laughs> I just, no, I just want to go through it, you know, just yeah. to, uh, to yeah. make the same level for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this. Mm -hmm. And uh, why I, uh, why I um, start a conversation with you regarding that? Because uh, we recently made a design for a huge corporation regarding uh, itself, Cloudium, and the object storage. Uh, there are like service provider for uh, for their uh, customers, also internal, like also external. And I saw that the object storage is like a perfect solution for, uh, at that case, you know, to keep a lot of backups. For example, because those safer providers, you know, they don't know the capacity that their user need and what they from the beginning, what they need, you know, they 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 start small, you know, the country have a couple of hundreds of terabytes, and they start to grow. And you say that at the beginning you've been a software company, so there were only a virtual appliances or software appliances, how it works, you know, at the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we are, of course, a software company. We're a pure software company. We've created HyperStore and HyperFile, HyperIQ. Uh, those are our free products, actually. Um, but we also sell hardware appliances, right? So you, you have a HyperFile. Um, so for example, you can buy HyperFile as an appliance. You can buy HyperStore as different appliances. We have different um, HDD drives with different amount of terabytes in it, like 10, 12, 14 terabytes and so on. We have also an all flash solution if that's uh, more needed. So what we can create a mixed system in that case with, where you have an old flash uh, system and HDDs um, and they're just tiered than two HDDs if the data is not needed. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's like tiering the data that is hot and cold in different places regarding the storage array. So coming back to this use case, you know, we, we designed this uh, solution for a customer with vCloud Director on the front. So the vCloud Director is the software from VMware uh, that it's allowing to create multi-tenancy environment for uh, end customers. You know, there was internal customers, but still there were customers. Yeah. And those guys ask us, you know, could you deliver us some kind of hardware Mm, or software solution that we will be able to present in multi-tenancy world. You know, we, we, we are simple people, you know, we just type in, you know, in Google, uh, like uh, object storage for service providers, you know, and you just get guys pop up. And how, what, why it happened? You know, you said about something about this entity and from its, its service providers are your market. It's something which it's what you seek for. Yeah, actually, uh, we are coming from this space. Um, it was how our story was started. Actually, Claudian was designed uh, as a hyperstore for NTT, for the Japanese company mm -hmm. that was operating there for four years until we were market ready to actually offer our solution for somebody else. So it was really basically four years in the action only there. Um, uh, we solved, of course, all the issues that the, the technology had. And 
then we started to go on the market. Then we realized very quickly that there are, there's a lot of other use cases that can be very, very interesting for the world. And um, so there we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the solution regarding Cloudium and, uh, and VMware, uh, it's pretty straightforward because uh, I think you were the first uh, uh, company that uh, integrated with uh, with VMware regarding the object storage because it's visible from how they present their stack. For a uh, vCloud director, for uh, people who work with it, you need another extension called uh, um, vCloud director object ex object extension called Vioza in, in short. Yeah. And this Vioza is connecting uh, with the uh, Cloudium nodes. And these nodes can be both virtual or physical. We started be on the beginning on virtual. Uh, it was a quite a journey, actually, you know, because uh, you think, okay, let's start, you know, small. Let's start with 100 terabytes. And uh, when you go deeper into the details, you know that, that you realize, you know, as architect, that to get 100 giga terabytes from, uh, you know, to present to the customer, you need like 200, 200 something, you know, on the backend, on the backend. And that's why I, I start to talk about the software solutions because in the end you choose something like hardware, because on the beginning for proof of concept, you know, small batch of clients, it's a good solution, you know, just go virtual. But after you scale you start to get this problem of, um, I call this the tax of erasure coding, you know, because when you use erasure coding, it just takes you 60% of your disks, you know, just to keep everything safety, you know, that's just to be sure that one node will fall or one disk will fall, still you will have the data. So uh, we checked recently that you have something like this Cloudian hardware nodes and uh, these hardware nodes are like what, like, pre-design matrix with your software on top of it? Um, yeah, it's exactly, it's based on QCT or Supermicro appliances, mm -hmm. uh, Seagate appliances we also have. Mm -hmm. um, there you have, of course, the pre-installed um, hyperstore, hyperfile, and uh, delivered to the customer, right? So it's, let's say it's kind of mm -hmm. a turnkey appliance where um, you kind of have the professional services from us installing this technology, and you have the support starting from have like let's say from plug it in until software right so everything mm -hmm. hardware and software is going to be covered by uh claudian support all right nice. so uh, so basically what we did you know which you switch from this virtual machines you know to into the claudian nodes hardware nodes we start from three nodes and yeah the, you know the, the the service is growing so the customer is selling more and more internally and externally so we're seeing that uh, this kind of work uh, you know, that use case is working. You need a lot of load balancing there, um, more details. So we can, we can, of course, provide more details, but uh, you need some more, uh, you know, uh, uh, balancing on the front, balancing in internal, because Cloudium nodes are created similarly to different uh, software-defined storage. So you have three nodes and each node, it's like uh, uh, have itself uh, calculating power and can provide data flow through it so you don't want to have one point of contact to the data you can have yeah. like three points of contact which is awesome yeah. because it's quick because yeah. it's quick it's a peer-to-peer -peer uh, system yes exactly just, no, I, so we don't have a single point of failure in that case exactly yeah yeah exactly and uh, tell me because um the, the some of the solution that i uh, went through you know years of designing they were they had some kind of backend uh, the Cloudium don't seems to have a backend, you know, itself, you know, with InfiniBand or uh, additional Ethernet. It's just going through Ethernet, like a pure Ethernet. This was your, uh, this was your, I think, principal detail, you know, principal, uh, principal rule, just to have this design go through it, you know, and uh, uh, because what, what I want to point, uh, when we set up another region, you need to set up another part of, you know, three triplets of cloud up there because uh, the synchronization between the regions, uh, it's user driven, let's go. So the user decide where to put his data. When you think about AWS, you know, in the regions of AWS, it's more the same, you know, it has three buckets everywhere and you can decide where it is. So, um, but coming back to the to the subject of service providers, you know, those kind of service providers, you have this offering for service providers, especially for VMware customers, uh, how it looks like you, you you have these details to provide to our, to our users, you know, yes, how, of how course. it looks like. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Uh, there are different channels how you can actually acquire Claudian, how you can buy it. Of course, one of them is v, um, VMware. So you can uh, buy it via their um, line items, like via their catalog. You can also buy it via Lenovo or HPE. There are different uh, ways. Specifically, what we see in the MSP space is um, it really depends who it is and how big the MSP provider is. They go either uh, via pay-as-you-go model and buy it from VMware directly, or they want to have a complete solution, let's say, um, and buy then hardware from us directly. We really uh, rarely see the software only mm -hmm. variant. Uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about this pay-as-you-go model because uh, this yeah. seems to be very interesting. So you start there need to be a, some starting point. And what exactly, is this? it's um, so the starting point for that is two hundred terabytes per month, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a minimum commit of twelve months. Okay, so twelve months. You're saying that you will sell at least two hundred terabytes per month. So That's the right. same two hundred terabytes, not each month two hundred terabytes more. It's like 200, yes. 250, but at least 200, all right. And um, do you deliver hardware inside this uh, package or no. you, I need to buy kind of hardware? No, sir. So, so in this case, it is like a pay-as-you-go model is created that way that the customer is providing his own hardware and we are uh -huh. delivering only the service, the software on that. And um, mm -hmm. for installation, everything is a professional services, of course, but then they're operated by themselves. Therefore, okay, so, we have... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have of course we have of course all the um, we have of course all the certifications that um, the administration can do the pre-sales engineer can do uh, to get the technology better to know and of course to operate it on the professional level. Okay, so but when when I want to switch to the Cloudian nodes, do I uh, so I need to procure those Cloudian nodes, put in my DC, and on top of that, I'm buying kind of uh, pre-sale, you know, pay-as-you-go model. Um, mm -hmm. No, you, no. We we are working with a TCO model, so it's a total cost of ownership, where you of course buy either the software or the hardware appliances with the software pre-installed from us, and this is one way to go. Uh, the mm -hmm. third way is of course only for the MSPs that are in the VCPP program buying mm -hmm. um, the pay-as-you-go model. This is really designed only for managed service provider space. Uh, you cannot acquire it as an enterprise. Okay, so so the, the big provider is buying Cloudium nodes, putting in his data center and selling through the VSPP model that it's paying the VMware basically for that and the VMware is uh, re re reversing you guys or I pay need, you know, I need to pay two uh, invoices, how, how it looks uh, like. Well, when you when you make a decision to go mm -hmm. via VCPP program, you are actually going via VMware um, and sure. buying us via the VMware. You install it on the existing um, infrastructure that you already have and operate this technology, um, right? So, for you to to answer the question on the right way is you go either the left way or the right way. You're oh, okay. you're not really go for both ways because. Then, of sure. course, you can additionally buy our solution on top of it, the mm -hmm. hardware and the software. Mm -hmm. But um, this is, of course, in TCO, right? So you need to understand that um, you don't have a minimal commit. Then you need to pay up and front for the solution when you get the hardware mm -hmm. and the software. I recently watched on uh, over the YouTube uh, video of case study you guys with Veeam. And that it looks very interesting, you know, that the guys are putting backups, you know, into the cloud to some kind of VSPP partner, you know, that the vCloud director guys. They have this VLs uh, design on top of it, you know, uh, and integrated into the stack. And they're just pumping backups into the S3 buckets. Uh, it looks very interesting because it's very quickly you can, uh, you know, like restore into the data center that is already in cloud. So you don't need to download, you know, with your, you know, small <laughs> pipe to download all the backups from uh, from Cloudian, which looks looks very promising. Uh, but when we're going to the use cases, tell me a little bit more about use cases because service provider is use cases that I met, you know, yeah. because we yeah. design a lot for service providers. But what what else Cloudian can do for what markets, for what verticals? Yeah, um, before, we, before we jump into the, the use cases for mm -hmm. that, I just wanted to add something to that note that you just had. Look, um, the RPO and RTO is getting more and more critical for the head of IT and the people that are responsible for these topics. So to make it for them easier, this is why Claudian is actually an on-prem solution in their data center, because this is why it works faster, you know. Um, all the, let's say, major backup vendors like Veritas, VM, Rubric, Commvault, and so on, mm -hmm. they all have this uh, as free API and this is why we connect so good with each other. Mm -hmm. um, of course, when you when we talk about VM, then you've, of course you have a NAS or a Sun in between. But still, um, we we can have uh, extremely uh, high cost savings at the end um, as a backup and archive target 
for uh, VM. Okay, so basically so, inside the, your DC, you're putting the first tier based on Cloudium and the second tier based on S3 buckets, maybe on Cloudium somewhere in the cloud. Yeah. So you uh, don't well, need to go for the Cloudium as the ultimate um, archiving, deep archiving solution, but something more, um, you know, closer to your infrastructure. So basically in your own data center. Yeah. So, so what you... So what we would have is actually VMV10, for example, then you would have a NASA Sun, and then you would have a Claudian. And if you want, you can have an LTO tape um, robot afterwards. Mm -hmm. So this would be okay. also possible, but this would not be needed because of course we have already ransomware protection with VM, with Commvault, with Rubric that we can um, that we can already put in place, activate, and then have a ransomware protection on that. Okay, but in fact, a little bit because you have you you have the duplication compression uh, on the Claudian nodes, or you use this theme or uh, or Commvault or Rubric mechanism on top of that. How yeah, that works? We don't have the duplication. Are we mm -hmm. are not doing that. We're compression. This is what we have. Yeah, right. sure. Okay, got it, got it. So that's that's the way of saving space uh, on on Claudian nodes uh, inside your DC. It looks good. Yeah. It looks promising. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. What we also can do, I think it's also very interesting to mention, um, you mentioned in the beginning free nodes, right? When when we think about the um, architecture of free nodes, then we use 33% of uh, raw capacity that we can use. Uh, usable capacity in 33% is not really uh, efficient, let's say. But when we use ratio coding 5 plus um, 2, then we have seven uh, appliances. Then, of course, you can um, get way much more out of it. And this is where the yeah, metrics growing, starts to happen. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The the start is always hard, but yeah. on the end, you know, when it's when you're growing, because basically uh, from our use case, we um, choose Cloudium there because we look into the scale, not on the beginning. Because on the beginning, you know, it's not like you said, it's not very efficient, you know. But when when you, when you start to grow, when you start to have more and more terabytes, then this uh, marker of uh, waste, that, you know, the tax of erasure coding is going lower, you know, and you and suddenly you get totally opposite, and you have very a lot of data that it's um, there, and smaller, smaller chunk of data that it's, you know, this uh, X or or uh, you know the, the control sums there, which is uh, which is awesome. That's why that's why I said that for uh, more and more use cases that needs to grow. Uh, and needs to store additional new data, it's it's a solution. Because on the beginning, you know, you, you can invest in the beginning on NAS, you know, you can take a write six and it's easy to calculate. But when you start to grow a write six, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the device is finishing, you know, 244 disks right now. It's not seems to be a very much, you know, and, um, and suddenly, you know, when you when you need to store a tons of data, archive them a long time, you know, it's crazy stuff. So let's go to the use cases because the service providers can sell Cloudium, you know, and make money from on top of it. You know, it's it's a, it's a it's a good stuff. You know, we we test it; it works pretty nice. But what else? What else Cloudium can do for different verticals for different markets? Yes, um, well, there there are quite a lot. So um, let's start first with the industries that we are covering. We are covering um, media and entertainment. That's quite a big one that uh, we have. There are different channels. There are movie producers. Um, um, why is that? It's actually very simple because they can, with the metadata within the buckets, can find very, very easily the data that they need. And if you compare it with tape, where you have actually a lot of people uh, need to, uh, let's say, work with the robot, go downstairs, do something, you can find it very, very quick because of the single name space sure, that allows mm -hmm. you searchable data. So this is what we do with the metadata, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, wait, wait yes, let's stop a little bit with this media media business, uh, because we, we designed uh, some years ago a solution that, um, you know, some uh, stream of production had their own software, you know, some like now they call it the dev software, you know, like the CI, CD stuff. Mm -hmm. But years ago, you know, it was just heavy automated, hard, uh, you know, hard coded, uh, scripts, I don't know in yeah. what, probably in Python. And these years ago, you know, they, they use also the, the, the object storage to just store big chunk of raw material with data on top of that, because I, I think this is important. You know, like we said in the beginning of our conversation, the object storage is kind of database based on storage matrix. So you can put this object and on top of that, you can put some metadata. So we can say that it's like, you know, this is movie, uh, this is with, um, you know, uh, that actor uh, covering that scene, uh, that localization. And you can have a lot of those data and you can search not 
like inside the row file just on the metadata. That's why I want to just add that. that that's why it's quick. That yeah. could be quick. Yeah, and also growing, you know, because yeah. uh, HD, 4K, 8K, I know where we're going, you know. So exactly. We, it's exactly. Be crazy. The data, it's exploding, it's... actually. Absolutely. I believe the technology is from Adobe, which have uh, face and uh, voice rec recognition. So that allows you actually, once you let it run over the data that you have, um, if you put in, for example, if you look for a specific voice or for a specific face, um, you can find them because they're tagged. And this is like try to imagine you're a director, you're a movie maker, and then you need to you need to create it's a show or movie. something. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly, exactly. You just have like let's say a Google uh, Google um, like search, and then you just type in what you want, and it just plops everything up that you need. So of course it's a time um, saving and energy and everything. So time is money at the end, and this is where you'll have to benefit from it. You know, I, I like the idea also that it's close to the data center, you know, that you are maybe not the data center, it's inside the data center where the producers uh, make the ma magic happen, you know, because uh, when you finish some material, usually you're not coming back to it, you know, you want the deep archiving somewhere inside your DC and somewhere outside your DC, just to be sure that if something burned here, that your data gonna be safe. Yes. But um, if you put that object storage in general close to the people who just processing this data, mm -hmm. seems legit, you know, seems like a good idea. It's better to put that way than to put it like on the NAS storage, you know, because the NAS storage, you know, even if the scalable, there are here, you know, uh, technology that uh, brings, let's say, un you know, like super scalable NAS solutions. They works really well for big chunks of data, but the question is if they can add some additional layer on top of it, like metadata, which is, could be which could be a very useful for your applications. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, so what what else? What what on another vertical? Where what you have in yeah. mind? You know, when you're thinking about Central Europe, you know, let's not go too much in the west or east. You know, just talk a little bit here because yeah. we have we are smaller. We have smaller business, maybe different a little bit uh, um, use cases. Yeah, so let's uh, let's jump very quick on the topic that you had with the NAS storage, which what is I think very interesting for a lot of people is a uh, NAS offload. What that, what does this mean? That means that uh, you have an opportunity with um, a tiering policy from the NAS storage to bring the data that is not touched for let's say 60 or 90 days into object storage from Clodian. So at the end, you don't need to buy more NAS storage because yeah. you can just offload your data to object storage and still mm -hmm. get it back. So it takes a little yeah, bit longer. It's like glass here. When you when you when you talk with the people, you know the AWS uh, idea of glacier storage or some kind of cold storage in general, it could happen in your DC, which um, you know usually you need you know 200 300 terabytes for your raw data to process. Maybe you can put it on NAS if your if your media going for 8K, it's gonna be 400 terabytes, but still. And the rest of the automatically, you're saying that it could happen automatically. So it's it's coming out from, from the NAS storage into the Cloudian on the S3 protocol. Exactly. So what is happening there is actually a policy that uh, you can create policies, of course, in our technology. And this allows you to tier into object storage. Yeah. Nice. Nice, cool. That's pretty cool, sounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, Maybe something pretty... something interesting to add to that. Uh, we are certified since last week with the, mm -hmm. um, with the AWS. Mm -hmm. um, and that what means that the, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What what is what it what this means? You know, like um, for the end user, you know, that you are certified yeah. from AWS. That means that uh, if you, you you know, for example, the outpost technology from AWS, mm -hmm. that is an sure. on-prem solution. Yeah, 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 we are certified with them now. Okay. That um, that's very good for us too, because uh, we are of course one hundred percent as free native, how we call it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's also very good for the end user. So you if can she's provide, deciding... uh, yeah. So if you have outpost uh, inside your DC, you can treat S3 packets from AWS, uh, you know, through and uh, AWS console. But honestly, they will stay on the cloud and locally somewhere there. You know, like in, inside your DC, or it's gonna work on something like this, like extension for S3. Extension for the outpost technology from uh, from AWS. Exactly. So certification yeah, with them. Makes uh, gives us, of course, a very good standpoint uh, on the market. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Looks good. So um, another thing, because 
And I think we talk a lot about archiving. We talk a lot about um, storing uh, a huge amount of data. But, you know, like we start our conversation today a little bit about COVID uh, uh, stuff and how this, uh, how we want to go for a quick beer or something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's here and everybody see how the, uh, you know, hos hospitals, medical market is growing and mm -hmm. how you're feeling, you know, in this market, because uh, the, this seems to be a lot of data there. And uh, that's the case. Yes. Yes, I can tell you that out of personal experience. So where I'm coming from, we actually had DVDs. <laughs> there was your data from what was happening with your dossier, like with your file. Uh, we're trying to break the silos in this hospital. So what Claudian is doing, uh, we we can um, achieve. Uh, we have some partners that are doing that with us. Uh, Highland, for example, is one of them. Um, what we are doing is we are breaking the silos by having one archive uh, for everything. Right. So that means it's a vendor neutral archive, actually, and you can have uh, your um, pictures um, if they will if they were done in one file in one dossier. The doctor can can open it, but also can send it to another doctor. Right. So you mm -hmm. you kind of you get more flexibility. And if there is really something, everything is just combined in your dossier. So you don't kind of. What can I say? If if they would run analytics on it, they would immediately see if there is something that is known to humanity. They could find it super quick uh, within your results let's say that were made with you that is of mm -hmm. course um, a very good thing so we can um, prevent and uh, we can achieve way much more with it okay, but, you know I, I always like to talk about case studies uh, like they are like there are you know like kind of scenarios so imagine that you are going to this hospital you know and there is a tons of mass everywhere in every, each each corner you know you have uh, some file server with some stuff you know for different machines most of them you know are uh, bounded to the uh, warranty of i don't know some producer of mrtg so uh, you know hardware how you deal with that you know strangle strangles of technology you know that it's a lot of them there and how, how are you doing it how, how you present to the it or or uh, or director of hospital what what is the standpoint you know how yeah do we so, so basically um we are trying of course to to get our archive uh, into place and this archive is um is um breaking the silos actually because in one unit in the hospital is stored your data for for your heart the yeah. other unit is you stored your data for, for something else, laboratory or whatever. What we are trying to do is, of course, to break the silos to have one unified storage. And this would actually contain your dossier, like your file. And uh, mm -hmm. this file would be available for all the doctors everywhere. So you you just sure. you, very sure, flexible. But, um, you're doing it with partners, you know, you have some exactly. integrators, you know, in some countries or you're doing always by your professional service. No, 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 no. So, yeah, there are, of course, technologies that are doing that. Those are vendor neutral archives as well, where we're coming together to bring the um, to bring the storage capacity on the back end for that. So where we add value to this um, project is the capacity, the storage capacity. And this is, of course, the, the most important part. We are doing that very successful with universities and hospitals. Okay, about universities, this also yes. seems to be very interesting because your universities is a huge uh, hub for R and D um, and innovation, and how they can uh, you know use Cloudian storage, how how they using it because uh, from what we talk uh, recently, you said that you have some cases with universities. How how they using the object storage generally? What what yeah. is the use case? It is, of course, an archive for them, a huge archive, and they use it in different units um, through the single namespace. They have access to all the data that is storage there. Um, and it is very easy also to grow within, very easy. So if you want to extend your storage, you just add new nodes into that. And this, mm -hmm. is, how, this is how they use it mostly. We have some study cases. Um, we have a 13 petabyte installation in Germany. We have a video case study actually in the UK with the Leicester University. We have more universities actually worldwide. It's just not uh, very common. Not not every one of them gave us a case study, but um, mm -hmm. we're working with quite uh, some universities. They really like the product. At the end, it's of course the, um, also the um, price of, let's say um, the cost price is a very important topic. So how to achieve something with a low cost factor, but get the most out of it. And this is where Claudian comes into the game and helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, 
so you, you can use it for a laboratory to store data. You can uh, process data on top of it. You said that you can run analytics on top of it. I, I didn't get how could, how could you do it? That you, you need additional software, or you or, or in cloud and you have that kind of software. You you will need additional software. So in place analytics, um, we need to understand that AI technology and machine learning technology cannot do without um, data that they learn from, right? And uh, Claudian gives actually a lot of uh, capacity for this data so that your applications that want to learn from it can do that right it can be a, you can index with a splunk for example there's hadoop mm -hmm. and there are different uh, technologies if it has an s3 api um, we can connect it and mm -hmm. work it out um, you said something about um, splunk splunk is generally a cm solution so um, it's uh, for a log uh, uh, the, you know, like they process the they process the logs and give uh, the user feedback regarding what happening in their infrastructure. Yes. Um, so, this the, 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 your customers are using Cloudian for uh, storing logs. Um, yeah. So what they're doing, they're actually using mm -hmm. it for their buckets. They have, of course, cold and mm -hmm. hot buckets. And what yeah. uh, what Claudian, where Claudian is adding value, it is that um, you can um, run more storage through. Splunk, mm -hmm. so uh, more data through Splunk, and uh, you don't need to buy more expensive um, licenses from Splunk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you you put uh, all the logs or syslog data to uh, object storage. You can uh, of course replicate it between some uh, places, just not to lose it, and use it as a bucket for you. It's quite interesting uh, use case because Indeed. this is not connected to some verticals. You know, everybody needs storage lo store logs. And this usually it's uh, the subject that uh, it's the, you think at the beginning, you know, how to build your data center, how to build your infrastructure, you know, the servers, you know, that like active, super active, super fast, you know, storage arrays regarding block storage. And in the end, you know, you start to think about that kind of stuff like CM or like security, maybe a little bit earlier, but CM usually, you know, the, the people think about it. So, okay, where to put it? You know, oh yeah, we build it. Where where to put CM? So, so you, you're saying that a lot of customers using uh, Cloudium for CM uh, purposes, or uh, or you have these cases? You see this? Yeah. So what we see more mostly is uh, from the en enterprise space is backup and archive. This is the mm -hmm. most used uh, useful case that we see exactly, and they use it the most of the time for the ransomware protection. Okay. Back up an archive, of course, in the first place, and then ransomware protection is a high topic. Uh, uh, what what is about the ransomware protection? You, you, the, uh, the cloud can have this warm solution or something like this. Exactly. So we have a, a um, technique. It's an object lock called object lock, mm -hmm. where we are routing actually the data, the bucket uh, from the root, and it cannot be changed or modified or whatever for a certain policy based timing. Right. And when we look, take a look around, what is actually happening at the moment in Ireland with um, with their health sector or with uh, mm -hmm. United States, what happens there with the pipelines and so on. Ransomware, ransomware attacks actually exploded uh, during the pandemic. So for everyone that is kind of concerned about security and let's say sensitive data within his company and he's the responsible one, it's of course very to recommend to take a look into the warm features or the object lock function from us and just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit more uh, for, uh, for our listeners? Um, how the worm would help them, you know, because not everybody are uh, familiar with that, you know, a lot of people knows what it is, but let's level the knowledge, you know, to, this, to the same place. What is this? How, how, how you can use it? How you can use it in your architecture? You know? Well, um, yeah, there is, it's a, yeah, it's a function in uh, that we have in the hyperstore that you can activate on the bucket level. And this policy is after you store the data in it is um, not changeable. It, uh, you cannot do anything with it anymore. So this data cannot be modified or changed or deleted mm -hmm. or moved until a certain time. And this is where you guarantee it for yourself. It's uh, very important for, let's say, very sensitive data. and. Um, well, we have uh, different yeah. customers in different fields that are using it for different purposes. It starts with uh, human resources, for example, and it can go bis until um, bioinformation, um, bioinformation, informatics in the way of um, where they work out maybe a vaccine at the moment, you know, and this data is highly, 
important that uh, cannot mm -hmm. be should not be anyway um, available for a rent to so like, like evidence yeah like evidence for a core everything, everything I do. sure okay so so basically i will explain a little bit from the architectural perspective so when you have your backup for example done you have your backup done on a repository that it can be rewritten each day so each day you put another part of data on it. You can delete something and you can also add something. You know, when the ransomware is attacking you, it's generally wipe out the system because you can re read and write, you know. So it's going to encode it. And uh, if you will have backups, you will still have problem because those backups going to be encrypted, you know. So you lose your infrastructure and after that you usually usually losing your backups. What the, the Vadim is saying here is that you can put uh, this, uh, how you call this mechanism, this warm uh, object mechanism? lock, object lock, object lock on top of each bucket. So you don't need to take entire, you know, device and said, OK, this is locked. No, you just take a small part, which is important for you and just lock it. And this seems to be very interesting because you can lock only data that is crucial because, you know, guys, if you lock the data, you cannot delete it, so basically you cannot overwrite it, overwrite it, and uh, well, you, it's forever there <laughs> till yeah. you will know your software because it's a software mechanism. So you can yeah. always um, uncheck this button and delete this data, but still you need the administration privileges to do that. And somebody who could do that, you know, it needs to be very tricky to get on your privileges, log in into the Cloudian, you know, uncheck this button and then delete it. You know, this is going to be a kind of a hacker attack that nobody will survive. So <laughs> I don't think that there is a way to survive that kind of stuff. Uh, usually when we build the architectures, you know, uh, regarding object storage, we always build two object storage as an active part and the third object storage, we call it vault. And the vault, it's something like you said, Vadim. So the place where you just you know, replicate all the important data. And like the name is saying, you know, it's like it's your vault. So nobody have access there. Even admins have another way, you know, another place that they, they need to log through. So for example, some bastion host and they just get there to get the data. So very useful mechanism. We use it a lot uh, with worms, uh, with worm and also this um, this mechanism from Cloudian. I, I think it's, it's, it's worth to add this to the design because you know, uh, when uh, shit gonna happen, uh, then it's nice to come back to some data, not to go to your chief of finance and saying, hey, you know, you, you can start typing all the data from last 20 years, you know, because we lose all the backups. I, I, I think that all the companies should go for it. Uh, and especially that if you have three nodes, like we said, erasure coding <laughs> starts to go up, you know, like the level of erasure coding tax is going down and amount of data that you can have in your system is going really up. So we're to try it. We're to try it. Um, another thing, you know, because we talk a little bit about those verticals. What else? What else? We had these hospitals, we had uh, universities, we had media. Where, where, where are you finding yourself also? Um, we also definitely in uh, financial services and public sector. This is the two things mm -hmm. that I would also add to that. We are working with um, um, some governmental organizations in the mm -hmm. Nordics, in Benelux. Um, we have the Austrian parliament, for example, also as mm -hmm. one of our customers. We're working actually more and more with public sectors. We're certified. We have uh, all the validations that you actually need for that uh, to be secured. And you will not believe it, but they are actually also very, very interested in the warm and uh, object lock um, technology you know. because yeah, this is the game <laughs> change, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a this is a thing, you know, like we said, because, uh, you know, when you are legislation, for example, like a parliament, you know, and what you will say, oh, sorry, we lose all the data for the country. For, you know, okay. No, it's not, not supposed to happen, you know. No. Um, so, uh, so uh, coming back to this public sector, but uh, what kind of public? Because public sector is a huge, you know, a huge bag of organizations. So you have this uh, justice uh, departments, you have health departments, which we cover a little bit. But which one? Which part of the uh, you feel the best? You know, it's army there. Yes. Where, where is so? Our... Okay. So the United States definitely are running um, also for the army, our solution, this is 100% sure. I can uh, tell you that it's um, very obvious also on our website. Uh, it's one of our major, I would say, biggest installations there. But also what we also see um, is uh, public transport is definitely a part of it. Um, the um, governmental organs that are printing your IDs, passports, this is something that we see a lot. Mm -hmm. And 
actually everything that is going into sensitive data because that needs to be extra protected. You know, the time is shifting from um, from the LTO tapes, um, the robots going a bit more into the hard drives and to, a little bit more into the object storage world. And this is where it actually comes um, more and more interesting. You know, um, it has an impact and we see that more and more coming. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see it also as an architect. And um, I met a lot of customers that they always ask him why I need to change those tapes. You know, it works. Works. Yeah. What is your argument when, when you're going to the guys and you're saying that you will sell them hardware or software for bazillions of zloty? And uh, what the, the, the value is there? What is the, you know, like your sales point? Because yeah. they have those tapes, you know, over the 20 years, they put it in Iron Mountain, you know, they feel super secure. And you're coming and saying, yeah, I'm going to put this all on the disk. They will spin and don't worry, they will not burn. Yeah. <laughs> what is there? How is your yeah. argument? Of course, uh, maintenance. Of course, you need a lot of manpower to maintain it, right? Um, uh, end of life can be a topic. Searchable is definitely a topic because um, time is money and everybody knows that, right? If you need a lot of people to maintain, um, then it becomes a bit difficult. If you need to uh, find somewhere uh, a tape in your trésor downstairs for 15 years ago, it can become very difficult. So what helps a lot is if you have it on hard drives, then it's searchable, mm -hmm. fast, accessible. This is the. This is what of, we see. Uh, Vadim, do you are you are aware of any project that some guys, you know, decide to move all the, um, you know, all archives from tapes into the Cloudium? You know, just, just rewind yes. those tapes, you know, and spend you know one year to do that. You had that yes. kind of case of stuff. Yes, we have this kind of cases in the United States, specifically in the media and entertainment uh, sector. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because it's uh, it's just the time. Because you know when they. When LTO is announcing, for example, end of life for there, then you need to do something with your data on it, right? Because, you know, yeah. kind of you need to go a little bit with the time. Um, we are moving and everything moves a little bit. So you want to be also a little bit kind of um, updated, and not mm. old fashioned. I, I, I understand the point. So also you can get to retired your old backup solutions because they change usually during the years. You know, you don't stay with, for example, a good example is Veritas, you know, the Veritas is here, I don't know, like 600 years already, you know, this technology is existing, you know, I'm meeting that net backup or Veritas st st storage, uh, sorry, backup solutions, you know, like they have thousands of years and uh, usually they retire in some place, not only Veritas, but also different software, you know, uh, there was semantic net backup or backup exec or where, and they usually, they, they, they just, fin they, they just been replaced by for example, more new, more modern, also the version of the same software. So that the new version of Veritas, but suddenly, you know, there is a gap uh, where you cannot restore the data with new software that has been written by the old software, you know, and this gap is crazy because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's it, usually when, you, when you're thinking about archives, there is the always the worst case scenario with archives. So somebody's calling you and asking, hey, dude, do you have this data? And you appears that you have this data like 15 years ago, but you don't have technology to restore it mm -hmm. because the server that been, you know, with the software and everything, just um, you decommissioned it five years ago and you forgot that you, you need to come back to those data. We, we met yeah. those use cases uh, mm -hmm. very often because we have this kind of um, social insurance uh, institution in Poland that, uh, for example, in Poland, you need to keep uh, the personal information data for your employees uh, forever. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. if there is no five years, 10 years, like 50 years, no, it's forever. So mm -hmm. when you digitalize it, you know, it's it's kind of interesting part, you know, you don't need to keep it in paper. So you digitalize it mm -hmm. after that you put on your backups, you know. But we made, made so many times situations that customer put it on backup and the backup of retention, five years. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and, and nothing left, you know? Yeah. And they just and just keeping finger crossed, you know, like, oh my God, I hope that nobody will come from those years and ask mm -hmm. for their papers. Yeah. And um, that's why LTO, you know, that's it's my argument. I'm, I'm personally mm -hmm. not very fan of LTO solutions because they, they had their time. There that was that time. Yeah, in, in the past. And right now yes. we need to switch to something new, um, especially that you can make this multi-site solution with Vault, for example. So you can have Cloudium here, I don't know, something in cloud and additional Vault in your, you know, second data center or maybe collocation. 
that you just put the Claudian nodes and replicate there as a vault. Modern solutions, yeah. I, th I think this example with Media, uh, it's it's very interesting because uh, the biggest I, I didn't thought about it. The, the biggest uh, plus for them is uh, searchability that they are able to f look into this data and they mm -hmm. never had this opportunity opportunity before. Uh, you know, before exactly. That. I see it a lot. <laughs> I have also something interesting that I want to share with you regarding the Office 365, because a lot of people yeah. don't know that Office 365 is actually not backupping uh, the data, right? But uh, this is what Claudian is offering um, also. You can uh, make this with us. And um, that helps you actually a lot in a lot of cases. Yeah, because that's when really somebody big. when somebody on purpose is de deleting something from because he's not a happy employee or whatever, um, you still can restore it if you use it with mm. Claudian. Yeah, it's, it sounds good and especially you know it's good that you touch the subject because um, we start to use services you know like mm -hmm. uh, platform as a service or um, software as a service solutions mm -hmm. in many ways you know from your own data center but also from cloud but we don't read the uh, real you know uh, um uh, fuck you about it you know and um <laughs> and suddenly which would just pop up like with the office 365 you know like oh my god it's not backup how how it's gonna happen yeah it's simply like i said on the beginning with the claudian um uh, as a user you need to decide where to store your data and it's your uh, basically responsibility to be sure that uh, you 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 design this flow of your data this way um it's good that the people start to talk about it because everybody thinking that if they put something in cloud, it's super secure. Yeah, in case, in some cases, yes, but still, you yeah. know, you can, you can break it, you know. And so, but it's an additional software, or you just put it. It's like an add-on to cloud. And what, what is this? This is um, some kind of software. This is for backup to Office 365. That's a good question. <laughs> That's uh, something that we need to ask our technical guy. Ah, <laughs> okay, to keep good. aware of it. Mm -hmm. I just okay, definitely okay. know that um, this is where we bring the add, add value to it because a lot of people do, do not know that. So sure. how this technology technology works uh, in detail, this is something that I cannot answer today. Yeah, but... sure. We can we can we can uh, we can focus on on the part that it's there. It's very important uh, because uh, I, I saw a lot of software that is uh, doing backups of Office 365, but uh, not a lot of customers that they are aware of it, <laughs> which That's is good that yeah. everybody talk about it and. Yeah. Uh, Another thing regarding the Claudian and um, the use cases, because today I wish, I wish to go for it more. Um, the use cases for um, public transportation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really curious, what is this use cases for public transportation? Because in Poland, they're always late. You know, yeah. and if they use Claudia, I'm pissed off on you guys. But uh, no. if they're not yet, not yet. Maybe they're gonna improve, but right now it's like a total mess. But yeah, I wish I could help you with that, my friend. This is unfortunately not possible nowhere in the world. Yeah, no, oh um, where <laughs> where we bring but, the benefit? Sorry, yeah. But you are a Japanese-based company, some kind, some kind of you know origin, origin. But in Japan, you know, I, I met once a Japanese people in Barcelona, and it was like super funny part. You know, because we're standing there, you know, the train is coming, and the lady is saying to me, oh my God, this train is late. I said, like, two minutes, you know. Uh, late? Two minutes? Yeah. Come on. It's like nothing, you know, come to Poland, we have two hours trains late, you know. So a Japanese company, kind of, still, you know, yeah. you, you can improve it definitely. But yeah, sorry, sorry yeah. for this. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you. So yeah. in uh, how it really works in Japan, I've never been there, but it's a, it's a fact. So when the train is coming a, a couple of minutes later, it will be the next day in the newspaper. <laughs> so it's it's really a thing. It's really a thing. But yeah, um, it, it, in Poland, it's going to be only this in newspapers. Yeah. Then you know, <laughs> you've got small. Uh, no, no, no um, yeah. Please don't uh, don't get it wrong. So we have, we have of course nothing to do with that in that way. So what we do, <laughs> what we do is actually um, for video surveillance. And this is what uh, we have a Montebello. There's a city of Montebello in California, in the United States, that where we have uh, also a video on our website. You can follow up on that, showing you how um, they use our video surveillance technology in the buses mm -hmm. and this helps them a lot because then it was really like um, a lot of effort of uh, getting the data out of the bus and uh, work it out and if something would happen in it it would take quite some time uh, before the police would come on doing actually something with it so what they're doing now they have a different approach to that and the data is faster in the system it's stored on Claudian um, hyperstore technology that allows them in the buckets to kind of with the metadata mm -hmm. find exactly the right date, the right time in the right bus right. and what happened. 
And this gives no, you, right. of course, you need to imagine it like that. It's um, it's a fast way of uh, securing, and this is what they guarantee. So that's uh, actually very good. Yeah, it's good that they guarantee, and after that, they are uh, really doing it. You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of uh, public transportation companies guarantee stuff, but after that, they just don't give up anything about it uh, but I, I really appreciate that there are companies that are doing that um, but uh, coming back to the use cases again and uh, we have this um, use cases um, you know of uh, of different things completely you know I, I get this in mind recently I pop I jump on some article you know on the internet that there is a creating new crypto uh, uh, you know coin some kind of yeah. coin touch coin that yeah, that is based <laughs> on storage. Yeah, Elon it's Musk. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's it's gonna eat our storage again. You know that we cannot buy graphic cards anymore. So how are you guys? I, I think you are like super crazy about it. You know, at last everybody will buy a Cloudian and put Dogecoin on it. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm, how, how are you feeling that? I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not aware of it. I'm sorry for that. I, I need to disappoint you on that topic. I'm not really aware of it. What's going on with uh, Claudian and, and Dogecoin? I, I didn't have anything, any news on that yeah, in the last time. Curious, you know. Maybe, it's maybe good. it will come in the future. No, but uh, what what is what is actually super interesting about Claudian to know um, where we change the market, where we change the world is we are focusing only on S3 object storage technology, and yeah. this is exactly uh, where where we actually are good at because um, we are doing that. Good. We see that on, on the feedback from our customers. We see the existing customers growing with us and there is a need for it. And this is actually uh, where we are changing the game a little bit compared to public yeah, think, cloud providers. I think so. I think so because uh, we need a more and more integrated solution inside our DCs. It's not something that's going to um, be wiped out by public cloud because sometimes you have use cases that you cannot pub you cannot use public cloud. I'm not saying that there are a lot of them, but some of them there are still. Or you want to keep your archives near you. You know, you don't, you don't want to put all your intellectual property inside uh, somebody else infrastructure. You want to keep it close. And why I'm saying more and more integrated because what we see, you know, from the perspective of our architect, that uh, the manpower in IT it starts to focusing more and more on service. So consuming the services, it's visible when you're thinking about DevOps and cloud. You know, the DevOps guys, or SRE guys, who just um, or you know they configure services that they are ready, and suddenly you know those guys cannot move their knowledge inside the data center because in data centers there are cables, you know, the guys CLI and stuff. And I, I like Cloudian because it uh, appears to be integrated uh, with hardware and software and it's easy to use. There are not many people anymore, you know, the storage guys with long, uh, you know, tail here and, uh, you know, the hair like mine that they know everything about fiber channel. They, they, each year there are less those guys, you know, and we need some kind of solutions that they are be easy to use for uh, the new generation of IT people. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very important because maybe right now we, we don't realize it much, but uh, when you're looking at the landscape of technology inside the IT, you see hyperconvergence. So the easy way to consume block storage and compute, you know, you don't need those fancy SAM storage and stuff. Still works fine, but very, you know, so much easier. You need the object storage to store backups, archives, databases like data, you know, like like that. Maybe some um, scale out NAS for storing files, like normal files, but still there are simple solutions kind of simple solutions that you can easily consume as the admin and the user. So we start to move more closely to the public cloud model of consumption services inside your organization, which is good because we will be able to find people who are able to sustain it, to operate it. You know, in five years, come on. I'm super sure that in five, ten years, if I will say fiber channel, the people will ask me, eh, fiber channel, you, you mean, you know, some kind of village in Africa or something? No, they will not they will have no idea what is it, you know? No. And and that's why I, I like, like you said, that the change is there. The change is, uh, the change is totally there. Yeah. Um, to the topic, mm -hmm. just additionally to say, the, the only uh, space where you can scale out easily is, of course, the public uh, cloud space, right? But uh, we are offering exactly the same on 
on-prem. So you have exactly the same within your data center behind your own firewall. And you have, let's say, only with Claudian pure hyperstore technology, vanilla, how we call it, um, you have already a multi-tenancy, mm -hmm. role-based access, identity access, identity access management, and so on. So it gives you a lot of uh, freedom to operate, let's say, your private cloud mm -hmm. um, as an as a public cloud, let's say, you know, does make does make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I understand that completely because this is exactly, you know, what what I, I want to present to the people. The architecture in your data center don't need to be, you know, like a super complicated, you know, you need to make it as complicated as it needs to be, not more, <laughs> because usually exactly. the people, you know, put a lot of stuff, you know, they focus on, um, on um, for example, um, quality of service but actually the business don't care and they ask business after that what you know they put some hardware put some software and going to the business you like it no no it's not gonna work like this you should mm -hmm. ask them what you want guys and they say no, no we want this this you know we, we we want to put as much data as we want okay seems legit you know let's choose solution mm -hmm. i see this shift you know slowly happening i'm talking a, a lot about it in in this mm -hmm. podcast in my uh, sp speech in different um, you know conferences I talk about awareness of your business need, of your uh, requirements, and then choose technology. So, mm -hmm. but usually in Poland or in our region, the technology is first. You know, we, lo we love to talk about a little bit, you know, stuff, mm -hmm. uh, GPX, uh, 10 gigabits, 25 gigabits. Nobody cares, you know, in the business, nobody cares. They just want to put hell of a data. You know, I want to put all. <laughs> All of it, and and we should design that way, you know. And, and uh, I think if, I think this is very important. What you're saying, that shift is happening both from the IT side because there are going to be people who have no idea how the things working, and they will not be able to operate it. And from second side, it's going to be business who will say, "I want more, <laughs> I want more, I want more now," <laughs> and we need mm -hmm. to be ready for that. And, and uh, thank you very much, uh, very much for um, for uh, uh, conversation regarding these case studies. I, I like it very much because mm -hmm. if you are in this business, if you're looking for a solution, don't go always the way that you went 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Just look around a little bit because there are solutions like Cloudian that they are easy to operate. They are, uh, you can get help to uh, install it. So you don't need to, you know, finish PhD from storage solution to install it, which is kind of good. And also you, you can solve the base technical requirements. So speed, capacity, safety, you know, security, that's that's there. Uh, thank you very much for this conversation, Vadim. It was it was mind opening. I, I like it very much. Uh, I hope our uh, listeners also uh, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let's meet next Thank time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Take yes, care, definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much.